Welcome. We with them boys. We are in Atlanta at the Support Back College headquarters with my boy Corey and Justin. And it's a bunch of things that you have to consider. So a million dollars worth of merchandise sold is a million dollars worth of work being done. Started this thing with 12 shirts and $120. And yes, sir. Now we created this apparel empire and we just hit a, man, give y'all the knowledge, give y'all the tools that uh, we want you to trust in your vision, believe in yourself, and, and uh, know that you can actually make something happen. Let's get it. Mm. How you doing, baby? It's Marlon Watts, CEO and co-owner of World and Vision. And um, man, it's another special one. We are doing the World and Vision podcast number nine, but it's a special, special, special one. We with them boys. We with them boys. We are in Atlanta at the Support Back College headquarters with my boy Corey and Justin and his home. Um, I mean, it's just been a, a, a great time just meeting y'all. I already had a they think they could beat us in ping pong basketball so we're already having competitions and it's it's, it's just great but uh for everybody that's just supporting both, both brands out there um we just want to say thank you um without y'all we can't do what we do uh and you guys fuel us and um i mean we just want to give thanks and we we can't say it enough because we very we are very appreciative of people and we just ready to keep scaling this thing up and taking it to the next level. So I let everybody introduce themselves, and then we'll go ahead and get started with our podcast. Appreciate y'all for letting us pull up on y'all, hit y'all boys up probably like a week ago or two weeks ago, <laughs> yeah, and sure. they said come through. So we just got here literally like a couple hours ago, right. and we pulled up on them boys. So shout out to them boys for sure. It's for the culture, so mm -hmm. it only made sense. Everybody see both of us, but they Facts. ain't never seen us do something together. So. Facts, Facts, bro. Facts. Yep. Facts. Talk to us. Introduce yourself. Tell us who we yeah. tell us who we who we got today. Tell, tell us, who us a little is. bit about uh, Support Black College. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll start. Uh, my name is Corey Avenger. You know, one of the CEOs of Support Black Colleges, um, and we focus on getting our black kids back to our black schools. At the end of the day, you know, HBCUs is where we were able to go when nobody else accepted us. So. Mm -hmm. Now I think that it's important to continue to spread that message and allow people to see, you know, what HBCUs have going on. A lot of times you see the negative, but you don't see the positive. Yep. And so that was our main focus is to make sure we kind of push the, a positive forward. Right. Yep. That's yeah. Amazing. And um, Justin Phillips, a co-owner of Support Black Colleges. And like Corey said, you know, our main message is just to inspire, raise awareness and uplift all of our kids, especially our black kids to get them back to our black schools. But just shedding light and bringing awareness to black colleges. I, I love or I had watched a video, uh you was in a video and you were saying um you didn't even know about like a HBCU. Yeah. You could talk about that. I seen that. Um, that's what like caught my attention. Yeah. Uh I think it was the video with Rich, um, uh -huh. really. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I was the first person in my family in general just to go to college at all. Mm -hmm. So I was getting my hair cut and I only applied to three schools. I applied to Howard University, Baylor, and University of North Texas. Mm -hmm. And I was getting my hair cut. Granted, it was a long time ago because obviously I ain't got a haircut in a long time. But <laughs> I was getting my hair cut and it wasn't even by my actual barber. It was by my secondary barber because my actual barber wasn't there. So mm -hmm. I'm in the chair and he's like, you a senior? You know, what school is you thinking about? And I was like, I got accepted to these three schools. And he was like, man, just go out of state. You know, all those other schools are in Texas. Just go out of state, get that out of state experience. Thanks. And I just, I don't know why I held on to it so strong. I just took that advice from my replacement barber and I went to Howard University. And that's what it was. But when I got there, I saw fraternities and sororities and a bunch of black people that looked like me that were trying to do something with themselves. And I had never seen that before because mm -hmm. I come from a single parent household. So when I got there, I was like, oh, this is different. We need to bring some awareness to it. And then that's Thanks. when things started. So. That's what's up, bro. That's like uh, when I went to school, I didn't know. Like I was always doing Photoshop and Illustrator, but I didn't know that that was called graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> like that's like, and I don't like to say that a lot because people be like, what? Like, what, what are you talking about? That's but right. um, I wound up going to school for general studies. And like the whole time I was like, I want to do what I'm doing, which is was graphic design, right. but I didn't know what that was <laughs> until I uh, actually told somebody and showed them. Um, Cause I went to a PW, I went to Louisiana Tech. Oh, okay. yeah. um, so it was like, I was just new to the whole college thing, of course, I mean, first day being there, but uh, once I had told somebody about it, they was like, why you just don't go to school for graphic design? They have a great graphic design program. I'm like, I never knew that that was called that whatsoever. Right. And then I finally got into that. Then I just turned up from there and graduated from Louisiana Tech for graphic design. That's crazy because my minor was in graphic design. So that's I was, how I got the experience from Illustrator and Photoshop mm -hmm. and stuff and then design and stuff now. So He was just telling me about the, uh, y'all do all the design. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro. That's crazy. I told him, I was like, I've been using Canva. <laughs> just throwing stuff together. But God, I, damn, I think that's amazing, it's, it's so funny because, I mean, you say you, don't, you didn't know what graphic design was. And I think that, like, I didn't know what entrepreneurship was, right? Like, 
I was selling snacks in school and I was, I always had businesses all my life, but I never knew it was called entrepreneurship. Yeah. And yep. now that we're older and it's become cool, you know, mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur, but I've been an entrepreneur. I just been going through the process and doing the actions of an entrepreneur, but didn't know what it was called. I just thought I had my own business. Yeah. Facts. Yep. And, and I think we similar. We started off with selling candy um, in school. Then we upgraded mm -hmm. um, to iPhone accessories. We would get on eBay. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. man, we would get, like, long charges for, like, you know, three for $7 and sell <laughs> one for $7. Right. And then, you know, and then rechargeable cases, buttons and stuff like that before mm -hmm. we found our way to the clothes. Um, how we started selling clothes was um, we started going to football games, basketball games, yeah. and you were trying to swag it out. You yeah. know what I mean? You were trying to dress it down, get your, get girls and stuff like that. So uh, we thought it would just be easier for us to have our own brands to take the pressure away from buying clothes every weekend. Yeah. And so that was just was cool for for us, and we was just doing it as a hobby, um, not really knowing, like you said, we didn't know Thanks. that we was entrepreneurs, but we had that entrepreneur spirit. And um, we went to once we got to college, we actually got an accelerator program, and that's when we really started to learn business, understand business. They started to challenge us and ask us different things about margins, cost of goods, making the team, <laughs> taxes, real stuff, real stuff that that's you know solid. that we yeah. just didn't know about, and we got exposed to it, and um, we we realized that in that program that we wanted to show people that were just like us that they could do something with their life Thanks. if they uh, if once they get those tools and resources, it's, it's really on you to take it to the next level. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going we gonna to go ahead and get it started. Uh, my first question would be, um, what, what would you say makes uh, support, black, support Black College different than any other brand? Mm. That's a good question. I think um, just the one thing standing out is just the message. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that when you're starting a brand, there's a difference between like merchandise and apparel and then also lifestyle. So like, you know, but we have a strong message. And I think that other than that, you know, that's one of our main pillars that we lean on. So just the message of what we stand on, bro. Like there's not too many other companies or businesses that I know of that stand on the strong message like you guys and like us yeah. and like God is dope. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we all have in common common I think our message alone is, is one of the big differentiators what do you think Corey I think that our uh, our community is just huge right and so it wasn't a community that we had to create ourselves it was a community that already was there but was underserved mm -hmm. so when you talk about HBCUs I mean HBCUs have been around for years years but no one was shedding light on them so the difference between us is you know three years ago we started the brand and it took off quick because these people who weren't being recognized now are getting recognized yeah. and now yeah. they come out of the woodworks and people are like y'all came out of nowhere i'm like well our community has been here already now we're just giving them a voice to be able to utilize our platform and we're doing it through clothing um so i think that's what makes us different and also i'll say this me and justin always say we're a media company we're not a clothing brand we're a media company that sells clothes to make money but if you look at our social media and things we do, it's all media. We're right. like putting out content. We're the first to talk about HBCU news. Somebody gives some money, we're talking about it. Homecoming right. cancel, we talking about it. Like whatever happens in the HBCU space, we are the go-to place for that. And I think because of that and the community that we built, now we're able to sell clothes easily. Wow, that's what's up. So kind of, go ahead, you got the, something? It's just crazy because the more y'all like just talk about your brand and just talk about the store, it just, we we very similar like to how we got to where we at it's just crazy like just everything just from college to the message of y'all brand to just uh where y'all at right now it's like it's very very similar to how we came up too um All right. it's, it's, it's just like even with the uh selling you, candy yeah even yeah. when you're saying it's like it's not like a media you know it's a media company um, mm -hmm. we'd be saying the same thing it's like you we we really selling a message and we selling hope to where That's you it. could do something you know you right. could really trust if you really trust in yourself trust in your vision um, you could really make some out of it, and like uh, we really, we really stand on our message like full time. Yeah. And the clothes is just a tangible thing that you take away from That's it, and that you get to represent the message and the brand. That's yep. So with us, uh, when you seeing somebody wearing World Envision, uh, you know that they on the right path to success. Right. You see yep. what I'm saying? And we tell everybody yep. that um, every time they ask us, you know, what we doing, why we doing <laughs> it. But that's just, that's just, it's that's just hard. crazy because I just. <laughs> Cause just y'all, y'all and us is like very, very similar, bro. That's crazy. So the reason why we all successful is like, mm -hmm. the, it's the messaging first, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, we always talk about impact over income, making sure we put an impact first. The income will always come. Facts. But you have to impact the people first. Your messaging, what you stand for, like you have to stand on something. And so many brands are making clothes to make clothes, but not to have an impact. And so yeah. ours are to make an impact to serve and to give a voice to people who don't have a voice. And when you have that, it's easy for people to serve you or yeah, to yeah. support you. 
Facts. I, I agree. I um, agree too. I think just to even add to that one is like we always talk about it all the time is like if you want, you know, that passive transaction, you have to have massive impact. So you want the passive transact, you need to have massive impact. So that's right. one of our things that we stand on. But I think one thing that we all do as well, really well, is that all the things that we were doing, they were, we're not reinventing the wheel, but we came in and we, well, like Corey said, served the underserved market, but then we also had a very strong understanding of just digital presence in general. So the bigger brands that came before us that were doing what we did already, they were shying away from Instagram and Facebook and they weren't learning paid ads and they weren't learning Google and all these things. We said, okay, if we learn that because that's where the attention of our customer is, we can take market share from those people that aren't willing to do so. Yep. I think that's one thing that all of yep. us really assume. I was I was just about the uh you got something to add on to that well yeah it kind of similar to the question I was gonna have was how do they market to their customers how do they market and acquire new customers yeah okay. yeah so a few different ways um doing stuff like this is always cool mm-hmm. um all types of paid channels Facebook Instagram Google experimenting with TikTok about to get into Snapchat um, influencer marketing. Uh, I'm trying to think about <laughs> what else. I just think that we're consistent on social media, That's right? It. And so um, I always talk about user generated content. So, mm-hmm. like, people will post a reel of themselves talking about something at HBCU and we'll post it. And I think that that's drawn a, a certain community to us that wants to be shouted out by us. Mm-hmm. So they intentionally make good content so that we can post it. Which I makes, feel that. Because you were just asking me earlier, how do y'all get so much content? The people do it for us. And then we reward them by posting them on our page to, you know, 250,000 people. And so I think a lot of our new customers and followers have come from us just supporting the people who are already there. Yeah. yeah. Train them. Like, yeah. I was going to say, because uh, I want to go back to us being similar. Um, like it's two of y'all and it's like it's two of us, right? And it's like y'all y'all really got like a like a it look like y'all have a strong relationship and uh, even with in y'all office space, you know, you got your desk right here, you got his desk right here. So when y'all come here, y'all are basically bouncing ideas off each other, talking about the brand, talking about how you could grow even outside of the brand, just talking about just being yeah. successful in general. Right. So like how long did that like how long did it take to build y'all relationship <laughs> or like how did y'all meet? Like, was it like y'all just was, you know, y'all say y'all went to Howard. Yeah. Y'all yeah. were just at school, chilling, turning up. Like, how how did y'all meet and how did y'all stay, <laughs> like, like good friends? Yeah, well, like I first tell you, we also live together. So, yeah. me, so same also, thing. <laughs> it's never a time where we don't see each other. Right. Well, actually, we actually. Oh, y'all are currently live together. Yeah, yeah. currently. Like, oh, that's still. what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all, sit, y'all get to split the, split the rent. Oh, y'all smart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, listen, we, we trying to say that bread out there. Thanks. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. But I'll say this. Um, So, we met, Um, I'm a year. Um, above Justin so or before him so Mm -hmm. I was a sophomore he was a freshman I threw parties out at Howard and so one day I was like coming outside of a party and I this is when he used to wear his hair in a big afro like Justin (laughs) used to have a huge afro like I'm literally, <laughs> Are you serious? Literally yeah. this big. I'm, not, I'm literally not joking. And so I'm like, who is this kid with this big old afro out here? Like, what is what he got going on? So generally, I think somebody's like either drunk or you know, like whatever. Is a freshman. I'm like, hey, bro, you good? There's a picture right there. Wow, wow. We got, we'll, we'll show up for, make, the, for the camera. Make sure that y'all send us the picture. Send us that picture. We'll make sure we put it on the screen. Yeah. Thanks. So like, um, I was like, what's going on? You straight? And he was basically just like, hey, yeah, I'm good. I just want to see like basically who's getting the money out here. Like I'm trying to just see what's going on, like who's operating, who's running stuff. And so I'm like, well, you know, just come on in, bro. It's a house party. It ain't too much going on out here. <laughs> just come on, you know, whatever. And so um, I ended up chopping up with him a little bit. And then I was like, hey, bro, like that was different. Like you normally you see freshmen just trying to get on girls, whatever, whatever, not focusing. But he was like trying to get to the bag early. And so. I had already known that he was different from other freshmen. Not only the way, like his hair, he used to wear a bunch of um, things on his wrist. Remember you used to wear all those? Oh, yeah. He just, and he wore like colorful socks. He was very different. This is an extremely <laughs> different person. And so, um, I don't know, that attracted me to him. Like, I'm like, he's trying to be different. Like, everybody else trying to do the same thing, Fakes. go to the same thing. He was like on some different type time. And I automatically knew that he was going to be somebody that uh, could end up working with us, throwing parties. And so, he ended up. Um, getting a part of our team but then also kind of holding his own weight on his own and you know from there we just I, he got money i got money so it was just easy to connect um and, I, and eventually in college we ended up being roommates after a certain amount of time yeah. um and yeah, i guess the rest is kind of history yeah i mean that was really yeah that's what's up bro that's what's up that's crazy though. i had <laughs> just want to ask that i yeah. just want to ask that you yeah. want to tell them how uh how we met yeah. man we, we was um 
it's so long ago. It's for almost, <laughs> almost, period. almost like I'm forgetting almost. But we was, uh, we, we went to middle school together. Oh shit! Uh, at first, uh, we wound up. It was right after Hurricane Katrina. They had a Hurricane mm-hmm. Katrina in New Orleans. Um, so uh, right after that, we was moving back. Um, and I think I applied to go to like Lafayette Me High too. School or something. He wound up applying too. Before I knew him, you know, wow. we told, we tell a story now. Nah. But um. <laughs> Cap though wound up calling me uh, just before I went to Lafayette, and then it's crazy because the school Cap though called him, mm-hmm. and um, wound up starting that school early. Um, we wasn't really good friends though in middle school. Uh, I had like another little, little buddy I was with, and then um, Ma was hanging with somebody else. But we were all hanging together at least, so it was like a mutual friend thing. Um, but uh, I say uh, in middle school, we really wasn't kicking it. We knew each other. We was playing basketball and stuff. Marlon was like the basketball star, obviously. Um, <laughs> and then he wound up le- leaving and go to, uh, he went to St. Aug. Um, I wound up going to like the highest school of that school, which is like, uh, it was called like Thurgood Marshall. Mm-hmm. Um, and I stayed in the seven ward. I stayed like right by St. Aug, like literally like right two houses home. down oh, wow. from St. Aug. Yeah, so I was, uh, I feel like Marlon was leaving school one day and I was coming home and um he wound up seeing me. He was like, Man, what's good? Like what yeah, I was like seen in a while. And I haven't really I, I wasn't really chilling with none of my old friends. So I was like, What's good, bro? You wanna chill sometime? You wanna hang out with that? <laughs> Ever since that, like we were just um I was sleeping by that boy house every weekend. My mom already knew that's where I was going. That's crazy. Yeah, Marlon Marlon was like the first one driving um when, when we was young, so it was like oh, yeah. everybody he was plug. Yeah, we were, <laughs> <laughs> he was that guy. So we was just um on the weekends, we'll either either be an AAU game, or, it'll be, or we a skateboard. We used to skateboard heavy. Oh, I still like you skate, yeah, bro. We Damn, skate, that's bro, We skated heavy. <laughs> for real talk. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, we was trying to go pro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we was trying to go pro. Uh, bro. Me too, bro. I, was, I had like a membership to like skate parks and all that, like and back home in Houston. That's crazy. Though. That's crazy. That. We used to go. Um, so we used to we ride we ride we don't really ride like vert like we didn't really do like the skate ramps and stuff, but we used to uh, do flat ground tricks yeah. and stuff. And um, we used to always get ran off. Uh, like we used to go skate by Ben Franklin, mm-hmm. and we used to try to hit the step set. And I used to be like, "Come on, bro, they gonna come." The security used to be running out there, running us out. That's crazy. That's but wild. yeah, bro, that's how that's how we really um started becoming um good friends. And then Marlon was always the entrepreneur. Was always just grinding, hustling, um, just trying to make money for himself. Right. Um, so he wound up. Uh, start like he went to St. Aug. He seen how they was um, dressing and wearing cool stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was like, man, let's make a brand. Well, first we did the candy and stuff. Mm-hmm. The iPhone he says we were splitting that money with that. Um, I was selling my stuff at my school. He was selling stuff Jeez, at his school. Killing and it. then we he would come pick me up after school and we will split the money or whatever. <laughs> have that go. <laughs> yeah, but then um the first brand before we started it was called Paper Planes. Paper Planes. Wow. That's what it was at, at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> we had a couple of more. Crazy monkey and dead and all that, <laughs> but we had like a uh, we had the uh, paper planes brand and Marlon had put on a shirt. Uh, why I get fly? It was like why I get fly today when I'm fresh every day. He <laughs> spelled a word wrong, like, it, but he had sold all the shirts <laughs> or whatever like that. But uh, when I had came to that boy house, I was like, I was like, bro, you spelled the shirt wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the right. I'm uh, he spelled the word wrong on the shirt. And, uh, he didn't even know, and I'm the one who really like. Um, I was like always good in school, just mm-hmm. get A's on the test and all that. So I'm like looking at it real hard and stuff. He just was like, bro, I ain't even know. He, he was really like the entrepreneur yeah, and the hustler. Me. I'd be like, man, I ain't even know. That's <laughs> be like, bro, come on, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. But uh, we just joined forces after that, and then we just uh, wind up investing in uh, our our new brand. It was called World Invasion at first. Oh wow. Um, yeah, but then when we got to college, uh, we sh- we shortened up the word, and people just started calling it World Invasion. Wow. And like. Yep. Uh, it's like it's like one of the moments of where like we always tell people like you gotta have a plan you gotta like like have something to start with but like we really ain't start with nothing bro we just did it you know what I mean we ain't know nothing like literally nothing <laughs> we barely knew what screen print was honestly so like um we kind of just figured it out as we went through the process like we we just not getting to a point where we like planning stuff out and right. figuring stuff out like we really was just doing it really yeah. um so like uh. Uh, they was calling it World and Vision, and uh, we was like, man, you, you want to change the name? <laughs> like, so we wound up just like, just going with that, bro. And then from there, we just found our message of the brand. We didn't know what the message of the brand was right. until like, you know, a couple of years ago. It's like mm-hmm. we didn't know what made us different. We didn't until know what made we, us like, different. Sit back and was like, it's us the whole time. It was yeah, it was really wow. us. It was like man, ain't nobody was going. We started when we was fourteen years old. Mm-hmm. We was only twenty five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I remember when we was twenty three. Nick was twenty three years old, and we had twenty team members, and like not even thinking how big that really is. Yeah. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just made twenty five. 
last month. That oh, weekend in last month. Yeah. Y'all get into it early. Trying to, bro. And I, and I think one thing is like so many people try to go into partnership with people, and they don't have a a, a relationship to build off of, right? Yep. So people are always like, "How are y'all so successful being partners?" We That's didn't a question start off we get being a lot partners. Too. We we started off giving value to each other and just being good people, right? Right. If you start off being a good, genuine person, then you can build anything off of that. And so a lot of times people are trying to go into business with people, but they think of money, but not right here. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So we had the same kind of like his his mom, like kind of single parent home kind of thing. And like, you know, we both didn't really know too much about HBCUs. We were both doing the same stuff at Howard in the same circles. And so we, we built that core foundation. And from there we were able to go into business together because we had, both were genuine, both had good intentions. And, you know, now we have the same North Star, which is, you know, growing the brand and making money. So, you know, I think a lot of people always ask, well, how do you all, you know, how are you such good partners? Like, how do you find a good partner, man? Start off with a good relationship. Start off being genuine and, and being upfront with what your purpose is and, you know, what you want from that person. And when you do that, it's easy to, you know, kind of just, you know, figure out what you want to go from there. Right. That's what's up. Because we always, we always say, too, like, uh, even if, like, the business just made our relationship better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But y'all was going to always get to it regardless, yeah. huh? Regardless. So just starting a business <laughs> is just, like, it's even better because it's, like, y'all get to join y'all forces. But y'all was going y'all was gonna do something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we, we did a lot in college. Like, we, we would come home, you know, 10, 15. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Me and Justin, like, yeah. so we was already getting just off this. Where y'all was just nah, off this. That was our parties. Yeah. That was parties, party, not yeah. even clothes. We was throwing parties and making a bag. So yeah. it's crazy because like we were doing that, and then after college, we both were doing our own thing, and then we kind of came together for the social media marketing uh, agency we started, and we were we had what like three hundred clients, yeah, pay, all paying us a hundred a month. Like we was running up a bag, and so mm. I'm like, bro. We gotta do this for support by colleges. That's like, what's up, bro. We getting too much bread in other places. Like, let's take this serious, something that we actually care about, and really see what we can do with it. Yeah. God damn. I Matt, still, I got. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna, it was gonna get to my next question on um, what system or systems have you guys implemented in your business that uh, you feel have impacted the most? Mm. That I, helped you scale up. Scaling probably um, using ShipStation and Finale inventory for our mm. inventory system that's probably been the easiest because and explain we, that for yeah. people that may not know especially the finale one yeah so finale is basically an inventory tracking system where you can place your inventory in there that you have on hand and then ship station it will connect with it and ship station is how we print all of our labels so we have automation set up to where if a package is below one pound it'll ship th- this way if it's above one pound it'll ship another way and then also just um you know keeping track of our inventory that was the biggest piece for us and then also when we have it in stock it will then put it on off or excuse me it'll put in a waiting shipment and if we don't have it on stock it'll keep it on hold so now we know that we can go print a pick list and this is what we need to order Mm -hmm. but since then we also put in place like we don't sell we don't have and like just little stuff like that you know because we found ourselves like making a lot of money and then being like oh well we need to go buy all this stuff now because we don't even have it so just small disciplines that you know so you didn't did you tell them though like before they ordered it like you did you put in like the description like four to six weeks over time we did i feel like at the beginning we probably didn't too much but then over time we realized that it was more important to the customer just wants to know that's really it at the end of the day they want to be educated and they want to know what's going on so if you can be proactive with telling them what's going on rather than reactive and just reacting to everything that happens you can take yourself a long way so now we'll do like Mm -hmm. this is a pre-order it ships this day if it doesn't go out and we know that it's not going to go out on that day hey something's happening with the pre-order it's going to come out this day but we're just letting them know proactively rather than being reactionary yep I agree. That's what's up. That's what about fire. you? What would you say the biggest system that we implemented that has changed our business? I mean, really just because you more on the warehouse side of the brand. I'm more on the, like, the design content side of the brand. And we trying to build that up um, with just, for one, getting Lou on the team. Um, that was our biggest investment, really, uh, just so we could just always be recording everything. Yeah. Yep. But um, I say just all the systems that you really put in place um, in Nadia, um, in the White House to just get that on autopilot because it's just like, um, now it's on me, you know what I mean? Now I need to build up my, you know, mm-hmm. system with my designs and my content so everything can always be going. I mean, because we got it to a, we don't really have to be there to be able to get work right. done, you Correct. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. You talk I, about ClickUp. Oh, yeah, I can talk about ClickUp. ClickUp is something we, I, I'll talk about two things, actually. Yeah. Talk to us. Because one thing is our, our investment was our content guy as well. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a huge investment, mm-hmm. like, before we had Tim, it was like me and Justin, and really me. 
and I was just doing it very ghetto. Like it was, very, <laughs> like, it was getting us by for what we were, but we were never going to grow like that. Mm-hmm. And so um, once we hired Tim, graphics, video, I mean, he can really, really do anything. Like, mm-hmm. It literally any content you see on our page is him. And so that was huge for us because I think that that allowed us to reach more people with or without ads. And then our ads just got better because Tim was so good at what he did, what he does. And then I'll talk about ClickUp. ClickUp is a system that we used. Um, it's like project management on steroids. So basically, like I'll, I use the content, um, the content space, for example. It's like different categories. So it'll say concept, which means like this is a thought that we should post on social. And then it'll go to approve, deny. So once somebody puts something in concept, I'll get a notification on my phone. And they'll say, do you approve this or deny it? And I'll say whether I think it's good content or bad content. So if it's good, it'll go to approve. And then it'll get assigned to Tim. And then Tim, Tim will either do it himself or assign it to one of our interns. And they'll make the content. So it'll go to in progress. And then once it's in progress, they'll be working on it. Then after click it's up. done, click yeah. up. Yeah, C-L-I-C-K-U-P. And then after that, um, it'll go to, once it's um, done, it'll go to um, a, a review. And then I'll have to review it to see, oh, spelling mistakes or this looks good, looks bad, changes, I'll give notes into it. Then after that, go schedule the post. And then we schedule the post on our social and we use something called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, mm-hmm. and we schedule all our posts out. So we post four times a day, 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 5 p.m., and 9 p.m. every single day um, to give our customers. They know they know where and when to find us at all times. So it posts, does it, because like I had a couple of the automated um, posting apps, do it post uh, swipes? swipes? Um, no, it doesn't post swipes where you can tag. And I think we want to tag. What about reels? It doesn't post reels either. No, so oh, we post video? we post reels. They, it posts video. It, we post uh, reels ourselves though. Okay. Okay. Because you but, know it's, it's kind of like different. In, in yeah. Time. And y'all been I'm be, y'all been killing it with like the creativity for them. I reels. appreciate mm-hmm. it. Appreciate the that. creativity is definitely there. Um, I Facts. definitely see it. The sure. brand the branding of it too, because that's what I'm like big on. Like yeah. you know if you if you got so many people doing it, but they not doing it to where it look like it's support black college, yeah. like they don't need to be doing it. It's right. funny, so, it's a lot of people doing like some of the templates that we use for stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. they'll do it, but you can tell that they try to do it like us. And it's like, it's kind of like a, we doing a good job. Oh, like, definitely. Now people want to copy it. But uh, I think one thing about us is we take pride in our content because we know the value of it, right? So if you say to somebody, oh, you need to hire somebody for content, pay them 100,000, whatever, people be like, what, that's crazy. But then when you think about how much money you can make from hiring a content person that's good, yeah. then it's like, oh, it's lit. So yep. I think because of our content change, our customer also change. Like us doing the shorts video and it look fire make you want to buy more than one pair of shorts versus just buying your school shorts. And you're like, man, they made them Howard ones look good. They made them Hampton ones look good. They made them whatever ones look good. Now you buy them more. Our average order value goes up, not directly, but indirectly just because the content is good. Wow. Facts. That's amazing. I, we, we, um, Got a couple questions left because we we coming down to the wire. Cool. Uh, my next question would be, what what is the worst thing uh, in support black? What's one of the you know worst situations that y'all had happen in support black college history? But not really like bad like that, but yeah, bad to I, where it yeah, catapulted yeah, you yeah, to that next, next level. level. It had to be one of those head scratches. Like I can't believe this. Probably Black Friday. Ooh. Probably. Black. Don't tell me y'all ain't had the merch. I mean, we had a little bit, but not enough. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Black Friday was a nightmare, to say the least. It took. Let me guess. It took y'all a month to shake back. Yeah, uh, of course. I, I, just I to get the emails out. Oh I, I man! I, I, I mean, if we're being completely transparent, like it was hectic because we were also in the. Uh, we, we just got to this warehouse. So right before Black Friday, our warehouse flooded. Our last warehouse. Damn. Damn. So, not with the merch, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We, we lost like twenty thousand dollars of merch, maybe. Yeah. No. Like twenty thousand dollars worth of merch, so Damn. we were already behind. We already started at a disadvantage. We moved all the stuff in here, and it was unorganized, obviously, because we just moved in. And then um, our goal was to do a million dollars for Black Friday. Mm-hmm. And so um, I was studying this guy Ezra Firestone, his email sequence uh, campaigns, mm-hmm. and Justin was getting all the merch together, our new drops, and all of that stuff. And so we planned to make a million dollars without having a million dollars for the stuff and so yeah. a lot of people want you know i always tell entrepreneurs this you always ask for this amount of money i want to make this amount of money in my business but do you know the work that's required to make that amount of money do you know the how much inventory you need to make that kind of money and it's a bunch of things that you have to consider so a million dollars worth of merchandise sold is a million dollars worth of work being done yeah and so um you know we set up the systems we did everything on the front end but the back end was bad and you know plus the moving plus the um you know the flood so we ended up i think we Get our, got our last orders out from Black Friday, maybe in January. 
Yeah, it was like, tough. It, it was it was one of those things where we were getting <laughs> slammed on social media, like, y'all don't ship stuff. And mind you, we're in here every single day ourselves packing orders. But you know, because we had a bottleneck in our business, when you heat press and you have to stitch it, like that takes time. And so you can only do so many a day. And so you know, our hoodies that we did. It, this is my fault. I'll take complete blame for this. The last day of Black Friday, which is I think actually Cyber Monday for us, maybe yeah. Tuesday, I was like, let's do buy one get one free hoodie. Bad decision. We made a million dollars, but we sold <laughs> so many hoodies. Damn. Like that's good problems though. We, that's we good might problems. have we might have lost money. <laughs> no, did they did they um? But did all the people like did they understand after a while? or Did you have a lot of refunds? We had a decent amount of refunds, yeah. but we um we was talking to them constantly and mm -hmm. then also we were giving people like if we did have something we'll exchange it and then we also had store credit so that was something that i was yes. like we had to pull out for for that instance and we were giving store credit and yeah. they would still want to shop with us because we're just like bro it's just you know family company like really trying to you know do our thing or whatever and you know we can't offer this and then they were like okay cool so it was it went well but that's what's up bro yeah, we just that's fire out. actually yeah, that is that's fire. fire that's what we trying to do a million a month Yo, yeah. Consistently, we putting that out there. Mm -hmm. Hey, right now, y'all, y'all, you, you're literally watching the the two biggest brands in the next five to ten years. You gonna see us everywhere. So, nice. man, if you watching this video, we telling you this right now. Um, Make sure y'all like and comment and subscribe to our channel. But yep. look, before we go, I I, I want y'all to uh, plug them with with y'all information and um okay. y'all tell them about y'all book that y'all got. For sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So. After doing all the stuff that we've been able to do, been fortunate to do, we started to teach people, you know, because we bumped into one of our guys, Neo, and mm -hmm. he was like, yo, bro, you getting a lot of money doing, you know, the sales of your business, but you can be impacting more people and teaching people to do what you do and make that much money or even more. So I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's anything with impact, we down. So we started to package up all of the information that we have in our business and everything that we've learned so no one has to go through those Black Friday situations or vendors, mm -hmm. you know, wasting $10,000 and going ghost on you, those types of situations. And we just put all that knowledge into a book. And um, yeah, bro, so um, we both have our own separate books and we look at things a lot differently. I'm obviously a different person than Corey is and we look at things differently. So for me, my book is on lastecombook.com. And Corey, you want to share information about yours as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mine is www.coreyarvinger.com. It's just my name. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a book out called The 29 Laws to a Seven-Figure E-Commerce Business. So uh, a little play for anybody who's trying to launch a book. Release something on your birthday because that's mm -hmm. when people are more likely to support you. Yeah. So basically <laughs> what I did was I, I released a book on my birthday and I was able to make $50,000 on my birthday. Mm -hmm. So me and Justin always say we'll never look at birthdays the same. Like, right. I'm not trying to go party, none of that. I'm trying to make a bag. Right. So Justin's birthday's coming up. He just about know. to make a bag, just I know. promise you. So <laughs> we've just been dropping digital products. I dropped that ebook. I'm about to release three books tomorrow, Influencer Marketing Community, um, Shopify apps. And I'm literally talking about whatever my customer says they want to hear about, that's what I'm making the book on. And so um, I just mm -hmm. think you, there's a comp, there's a there's a people who want to be served. There's entrepreneurs who look at y'all like, oh my God, look what they're doing. So guess what? You could also sell them a book as well because they want the information and you've already learned the lessons. So why not, you know, give that out and Make a bag from it. Facts. Man. That's what's up. We're going to make great. sure we put put the link of the book in the description. Hopefully, we get us an affiliate link. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, we can get we us a bag, it, too. Guy. We need <laughs> Hey, help us out over here, man. Help us out, man. Hey, but once again, it's Marlon Watts. We are on the World Envision Podcast number nine. We in Atlanta right now. Support, Black, support Black College. Black we College. doing it big, baby. Thank you so much. Mom, I got to shout you out again because I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Thank you.